So maybe to dig more technically on the question of intelligence, do you think it's difficult for intelligent life to arise like it did on Earth? From everything you've written and studied about the brain, how magical of a thing is it in terms of the odds it takes to arise? Yeah, so, you know, magic is just... <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I like a, I like a magic show as much as the next person. I, my husband was a magician uh, at one time, but uh, you know, magic is just a bunch of stuff that we don't really understand how it works yet. So I would say, from what I understand, there are some major steps in the course of evolution that, at the beginning of life, the step from single cell to multicellular organisms, things like that, which are really not known. I think for me the question is not so much um, could it, you know, what's the likelihood that it would happen again as much as um, what are the steps and how long would it take? And if it were to happen again on Earth, would would we end up with the same, you know, menu of life forms that we currently have now? And I think the answer is probably no, right? There's just so much about evolution that is stochastic and driven by chance. But the question is whether that menu would be equally delicious, meaning like there'd be rich complexity of the kind of, like would we get dolphins and humans or whoever else falls in that category of weirdly intelligent, seemingly intelligent, however we define that? Well, I think that has to be true if you just look at the range of creatures who've gone extinct. I mean- right. If you look at the range of creatures that are, are on the Earth now, it's incredible. And, you know, it's sort of tried to say that, but it actually is really incredible. Um, particularly, I don't know, I mean, animals, there are animals that seem really ordinary until you watch them closely and then they become miraculous, you know, like certain types of birds, which do very miraculous things, uh, um, build you know, bowers and do dances and all these really funky things that are hard to explain uh, with a standard evolutionary story. Although, you know, um, people yeah, the, have the them. Birds are weird. They do a lot of, for mating purposes, they they have a concept of beauty well, that I haven't quite, maybe you know much better, but it doesn't seem to fit evolutionary arguments well. It does fit. It, well, it but, depends, right? So I think you're talking about the evolution of beauty, the um, book that was written recently by was it from um, was that his name Richard From I think at oh, Yale. Interesting. No, I didn't. Uh, oh, it's a great book. It's very controversial though because he is arg he's making the argument that the the question about birds and some other animals is why would they engage in such metabolically costly um, displays when it doesn't improve their fitness at all. And the answer that he gives is the answer that Darwin gave, which is sexual selection, um, not natural selection. But, you know, selection can occur for all kinds of reasons. There could be artificial selection, which is when we breed animals, right, which is actually how Darwin, that, that observation helped Darwin come to the idea of natural selection. Oh, interesting. Um, and then there's sexual selection, um, meaning, and the argument that, that um, I think his name is from, uh, makes is that um, that it's the pleasure, the selection pressure is the pleasure of female birds, which as a woman and um, as someone who studies affect, that's a great answer. Yeah. I actually think there probably is natural, I think there is an aspect of natural selection to it, which he maybe hasn't considered. But you were saying uh, the reason we brought up birds is uh, the the life we got now seems to be quite incredible. Yeah, so it's, you peek into the ocean, peek into the oh, sky. Yeah. There are miraculous creatures. Look at creatures who've gone extinct, and you, you know, in science fiction uh, stories, you couldn't dream up something as interesting. So, my guess is that you know, intelligent life evolves in in many different ways. Even on this planet, uh, there isn't one form of intelligence. There's not one brain that gives you intelligence. There are lots of different brain structures that can give you intelligence. So my guess is that the menagerie might not look exactly the way that it looks now, but it would certainly be as, as interesting.